what's going on youtube wrestlemania 40 is finally over and holy crap we had some action-packed matches all through day one and day two and on today's video we're gonna go over our star ratings for all the matches going from the beginning the first match with rhea ripley and becky lynch all the way to the end of cody rhodes versus roman reigns we're gonna rate them from one star to five star and i would love to know what you guys think about these ratings as well if you guys are interested in doing this own tier list on yourself i'll be posting it down in the description below let's get into it Alrighty, so here we go we have the tier list here i literally put it all in order so this is exactly how the card played out from match number one of rhea ripley versus becky lynch all the way to the final match of roman reigns versus cody rhodes it's in order and the reason why i did it in order is because it kind of is going to tell you the story and the flow of the, of the whole entire show because we might have some five-star matches we might have some three-star matches we may even have a one-star match out there so this is gonna be the easiest way for me to be able to tell what type of match we have so we're gonna start off rhea ripley versus becky lynch now first and foremost what i want to say right now the match was freaking amazing but what i loved about it most was obviously the entrances the whole entire book part of becky lynch of her coming out um with her book you know the whole entire story her outfit with all the writings on of her book all over her skirt and obviously on her her gear as well there was very simple words on it and i loved about it a lot rhea ripley's entrance with the band that plays her song was just freaking amazing and i think both of them really put out a lot i really thought rhea ripley might have lost this match but the fact that she won and she kept on and obviously mommy wins and everything it is for me the greatest start to wrestlemania and i want to give it a five star match that's such a tone and honestly to follow that up is very hard to do and obviously what did you have to follow it up was a six tag team match to pretty much separate the titles unless the same team gets both titles off the the, the thing it was more of a filler for me honestly i do like um grayler and i like us um austin theory winning one of the, the, the smackdown titles and i do like the r-truth and the miz won the raw titles and i kind of feel like this was more of a triple h thing and before we get into it this is the first wrestlemania under the triple h air and honestly they have announced it not once but multiple times throughout wrestlemania that this is triple h's show he is the one doing it and what i love about triple h is that and it gets me goosebumps our truth was almost about to lose his leg he had an infection i remember i seeing him on tiktok he was talking about it he almost lost his leg and triple h knows that r-truth has always put in the work he's done whatever the, the company wants him to do he's never had that wrestlemania moment and knowing the fact that we don't know how long r-truth has anymore out here triple h gave r-truth that wrestlemania moment um and they are raw tag team champions and to be a raw tag team champion with the miz is no small feat the miz is very huge uh, when he's with tag team champion multiple times back in the past so i like that part i like the part of you know austin theory and and the other um Geiler winning i wish diy would have won i love how their entrance came out that they had the gear of pretty much um triple h and Shawn michaels they were doing the whole entire dx thing i think that's a tag team that's going to be basically pull, um catapulting in the future with a lot of runs and everything like that they might be the first one that's going to feud with the miz and and um our truth that's what i'm thinking the other tag teams pete dunn didn't like it the judgment day i like that they got rid of the titles i kind of foreshadowed what happened with damian priest but i don't think they need the tag titles they just had that in there to kind of give a filler for both of them now i see that maybe that might, something might happen to the judgment day where finn balor might be getting a little like antsy that he's not a champion so something's going to happen there um, but I don't think that this was great of all of all things out there. The New Day didn't really do that much. Um, I would have to give this one, honestly. I love the ending, I'm not going to lie, a three-star. It's a three-star match for me. I don't think it really gave me anything like a five-star or four-star match. And you're going against Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch, which stole the show, to be honest. The next match was Latino World Order and obviously Dominic Mysterio and morales and honestly i think that this was just a filler match um i honestly gotta think andrade didn't really fit well with it i would have liked to see carlito the reason i think andrade was put into this match was honestly he came back from AEW because he wasn't being booked right and obviously you're gonna be wondering well 
WrestleMania just came on. You did a huge thing when, you know, the Royal Rumble came out. Why aren't you doing anything now? So I think they kind of just threw him in there. They won. The drive did a lot of cool stuff. I think he showed a lot of charisma that he has. I honestly got did not like the match. Um, I think it was just very just a filler for me. It's going to be a two star for me. I don't like it. I think that whole entire fraction just needs to end. Um, Dominic was just thrown in there to go against his dad again, but not a good match. Give it a two star. Probably the dog of the night, honestly, has to be this one. Jay versus Jimmy had no story behind it, had no reasoning behind it. The match felt like two very, I don't know, like not great workers out there fighting. And honestly, when I saw Jay fighting against um, Roman, it looked a lot better. It was more like a storytelling. This one just felt like just two guys wrestling in a match. Yeah, they had one spot like, oh, no, don't do it. And, you know, obviously um, they turned on each other or, I mean, Jay turned on Jimmy. It just, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Um, I'm giving this one the one-star match. Probably the dog of the night. Um, the women's tag match, the six-man tag or six-woman tag match. The entrance was cool. I liked the entrance of the um, Bianca Belair, um, Jade, and Naomi. I don't think jade is ready for wwe and i'm gonna say this why they really threw her in there and kind of give her like a quick spotlight and she kind of made it seem like she was the big deal but she didn't do enough as her first match to like really give me like oh crap it's jade is here she's you know like she was an aw the match was not bad but it's a two-star match now look i think night two did better than night one but that's what i'm gonna give it Gunther versus freaking Zami Zayn. I did not think Gunther was going to lose, but they gave a lot of things. When you saw um, backstage Kevin Owens, um, Chad Gable and all that backstage, it kind of gave you like, hey, look, this might be Sami Zayn's going to win. Then they threw out the whole entire that Gunther is like, you know, um, Victor Drago from Rocky and, you know, freaking um Sami Zayn is 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 rocky and you know this is kind of like a battle of like the biggest guy in the world you know a unstoppable force against someone that could probably not beat him I think it was great storytelling Michael Cole did a great job what they did backstage was amazing I love those backstage segments I think that was perfect for them and I'm giving this one a five star match 100% down the road huge match for me five stars all the way when it came to the main event, Rock, Roman versus Cody and Seth, amazing match. Everything went on exactly how planned. We knew it was going to be bloodline rules. Um, I love the match. I love everything that happened. I love how Seth was a little bit injured in that match. So it kind of showed a little bit, which went into the next day. I honestly, God, have to say that The Rock still did not show that he was gassed or anything like that. His mannerisms and everything, he just wanted to destroy Cody was so great and just the storytelling that they gave in that one at the end where Cody was just sitting in the ring pretty much how he was last year in WrestleMania 39 just gave great storytelling great atmosphere for us so another five star match there when it comes to Seth versus now we're at night two sorry we're at night two right now now when we go to Seth versus Drew McIntyre I'm gonna tell you something right now holy crap the fact that Drew McIntyre grabs his phone from his wife, sits there, and tweets out there, bored at work, was mastermind. The way he's always played the whole entire story. I love how CM Punk didn't get involved in the match. CM Punk was just getting involved in his head. Kind of like, you know, like, hey, bro, pay attention to the guy here wrestling. Pay attention to the guy wrestling. Seth looked injured. I love how Seth played it throughout the whole entire match. And at the end as well, unless he's actually physically injured, which he kind of looked like he tweaked his knee. And I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of people will be like, oh, it's, it's Kai Fabe. He's not really injured. Look, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I've seen football players jump in the air. Uh, there was a, a Green Bay Packers player, I think, once. He jumped in the air. He did the check down, whatever that um, Aaron Rodgers used to do. And he literally tore his ACL. A football player running to the field tore his ACL. When I played football in high school, one of the guys he planted his foot as a receiver turned tore his ACL. You can tear, tear that with no problem. And he had meniscus um, MCL issues already. So that might have played a factor. But the fact that Drew won, he got his moment. I love the fact that Seth looked at him and goes, you deserve this. 
and then he goes to his wife he shows it to a wife everybody's cheering for him and then he just throws it in the face of cm punk gets knocked out by punk and then out of nowhere damian priest cashes in was just amazing it was picture perfect of what we needed to see i love the fact that damian priest um cashed in on this one it's going to give a lot of um ups about it i think also with Sami Zayn being the intercontinental champion and obviously being on raw maybe that's going to give finn balor a chance of going after that title and go hey you know what now we're going to take over every title that's out here so that's pretty cool i liked it it was very good great storytelling five star match 100 <sighs> percent another six man match i'm not gonna lie carrying cross i love him i think he has the potential to be a superstar i think if triple h gives him free reign of what he's doing he could be what they need out there as a competitor maybe not on, on a like a world title but maybe like a mid-card title for sure bobby lashley throwing with the street profits and aop in there it felt very weak to me um i do like you know bubba ray dolly being in there and obviously bubba ray just showing them how to do the um the drop from the top and then asking him to get the table table did break which was kind of funny because that's a huge botch out there seeing a table breaking while they're actually wrestling showing that hey look that table's crap um was a little funny seeing that but the only thing i didn't understand was um i think it was monte ford's ran jumped in the outside knocked out both guys from aop and then all that stuff for like about five minutes was happening in the ring and you're telling me aop couldn't get up and try jumping in the ring and saving carrying across or do something out of there so i kind of felt like that was a little bit weak on my part i'm giving this match a two stars i didn't like it it wasn't the worst match but it wasn't great out there to be honest la night yeah versus aj styles we literally felt the match out there i think both of them did a very very good job in their match now i would like to say something i knew that la night was going to win and why because and i mentioned in the in the podcast with um landmine if you haven't seen that podcast i'm going to put it down below so you guys can check out that podcast that i did with him um on his channel i think aj styles didn't have a reason to win wrestlemania this was la night's first wrestlemania he has to get his moment. He has to get his momentum. Um, we do have a poll up as well in the community tab of who you think Roman, um, uh, Roman is. Cody Rose's first um, match is going to be against. I have LA Knight in there. I have Gunther. I have an other. And I think I put AJ Styles as well. So one of those three wrestlers, I think, is going to be the next person that's going to go up against um, Cody Rose. But we'll see which one it is. I like this match a lot. I think they both did a very good job. I think LA Knight has a huge potential of being a superstar in the future. And especially with Roman Reigns being knocked out, this is going to open up the doors for more um, chances for other superstars to get their chance at the title and maybe even win it. Um, I give the star a three. I give this match a three star for this match. We get into the United States Championship with KO, Randy Orton, and obviously... Um, What's this guy? Logan Paul. Christ. A couple things I liked about it. Speed being in it. Terrible. I don't like speed. I think that guy's a dummy. I know he's a streamer, but he's just an idiot for me. Um, I love the fact that Roman Reigns. Uh, Roman Reigns. Oh, my God. I love the Paul that um, Kevin Owens and um, Randy Orton were pretty much teaming up on on Logan Paul throughout the whole entire match. So when the first of the first spin, they go, so are we starting now? Or are we just going to go and just to go at it? Match was great. I think that was um touch you know textbook style wrestling of how they did it um i like the fact that speed got you know lovely um arcade on a table i like what logan paul did at the end he did kind of like a, what the miz would do the miz was one of those type of sneaky people that will always wait for the great opportunity to kind of steal a win out of anybody so when he did that at the end very cool job i knew that logan paul was gonna win i kind of feel like he's gonna get all the way to SummerSlam. And we're going to get something big out of it. Maybe his brother's going to be involved. Maybe some, you know, someone else. Um, so I do feel that Logan Paul is going to stay. Obviously, Prime is a major um, sponsor as well for them. So I liked it. I'm going to give it a... Uh, no, I'm going to give it a four star. We're going to give that one a four star match. I, I think it was a very good match. I think they told the story. It shows that the two veterans really helped out Logan Paul in this one. So four stars in that one. 
We're going to the next one right now, and this is where it's going to get good. Bailey versus Isle Sky. Bailey has been a workhorse of the WWE as a women's tag team champion, as a women's champion, as someone that brought out damage control, as someone who has really, you know, changed the landscape of wrestling for women. Um, I really feel like, you know, she was one of the four horsewomen. A lot of people thought that she would lose, which would be like pretty much her and Becky Lynch were the four horsewomen. Be the second one that loses out there. She didn't. She ended up winning. Um, I feel that that was the right time and the right person to win it. And honestly, the match was great. I wouldn't say it's a five-star match, but it will be another four-star match. It'll probably be better than the triple threat match. So I will give that one a four-star as well. And then we go to the last match. And before we go to the last match, I do want to mention something right now. Did you notice that the first matches in day one and day two was basically Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre, right? You had two people that are dating each other that both lost with Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins. So if you didn't know that, now you do. <laughs> but I think everybody knew that one. And then we had Bloodline Rules. It was literally... Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns. And what I understand is like bloodline rules. We're doing no disqualification. Anything goes. <laughs> Can't do that. And that's it. What I would have done, bloodline rules is any Samoan member, family, can get involved. No one from Cody's side can get involved. That would be bloodline rules. I would have loved to have seen Rikishi come out. Um, I mean, off of the wall Samoan, he can't come out. He's very old. He's actually closing out his um, wrestling company. I think it's WXC or something like that um, in Orlando. They're closing up. Uh, they have one more show coming up very soon. I mean, I would have loved to have seen that maybe, but I mean, obviously, whatever. I mean, Bloodline Rules didn't make any sense, but okay, that's fine. Or like a Lumberjack Bloodline Rules that you had all the members of Bloodline on the outside, you know, a Lumberjack style. That would have been pretty cool as well. Whatever, it's fine. Jimmy and Jay's little fiasco that they had was better in that match than it was in the match that they had before. All right, so that was actually a five-star match compared to the one-star that they actually put, put on day one. Seeing The Rock come out, great. Seeing John Cena come out, doing that quick skit was amazing. The fact that he was scared when The Rock came out, loved it. I love the fact that the Shield music came on and some people were like, oh my God, Dean Ambrose is back. Dean Ambrose is not going to come back. Well, <laughs> obviously but it was portrayed that Seth Rollins did tell um, Cody Rhodes I'm going to be your shield against Roman Reigns and he came out as a shield obviously distracted Roman Reigns Undertaker's music hits Undertaker comes out to a huge pop not fully dressed um, but he did come out you can see I think in the match with Cody when he lifted up the tarp you saw a hand move in that was the Undertaker under the actual ring but it was huge pop. I loved it. I think it was just amazing seeing The Undertaker in the ring. Uh, took time in The Rock. And a lot of people said, why didn't Austin come out? Stone Cold needed to come out. They showed the graphic on the on the actual screen. So I started doing some analysis. And not analysis, but I started thinking, and I go, John Cena has a reason. Solo and him had issues. Solo got involved. John Cena took out Solo. John Cena and The Rock have, um, you know, obviously issues. The Undertaker had more sense because The Undertaker lost to Roman Reigns. So obviously he wants the Roman Empire to fall. That's why he fought against, you know, he came out, knocked out The Rock to knock him out. And then the ending was just picture perfect. You had the chair in Roman's hand and he had two options. I can smack the crap out of Seth Rollins or I can knock out my opponent and pin him. And get the one, two, three. And what happened was that he had that mentality of when Seth turned on him when they were part of the shield, right? And then he joined obviously Triple H. And he hit Seth Rollins, which gave Cody Rose the chance to get the three um hits at the end and pin up for the one, two, three. <coughs> I'm sorry. To finish the story was textbook beautifully done. I loved every single moment of the match. It had me on the feet. It had my girlfriend on the feet. She was screaming like crazy. 
Uh, we had a lot of fun in this match. I think the entrances were, were, were just great. I don't know why Brandy was worrying a silhouette like she was going to get in the ring. I mean, whatever. That's fine. But this match, 100% five star. If I had to do the five stars up here, it would be Roman versus Cody, number one. I would probably put Gunther versus um, Zami Zing as the second match of the night for me. I'll put Becky Lynch versus Rhea Ripley. I will probably put... No, actually, no. I'm going to put Seth versus um, Drew. Rhea Ripley versus um, Becky Lynch. And then, obviously, the four-way. Uh, the tag match at uh, night one. That's how I will put, literally, the five-star matches of how I loved them um, throughout the show. What I loved so much about it at the end as well was they called out Triple H. They called out Bruce Pritchard. You know, everybody came out. They, they, they got up, you know... Cody Rhodes, like if he was Rocky. Um, Khan was out there as well, the one that writes the checks for them. And what I liked about it is if you watch some other videos, there's a part that Roman goes up to the ramp and Paul Heyman just hugs him. And it's like, you know, thank you for four years of being the champion with us. Thank you for letting me ride with you through this championship and being who you are right now. And I think that's just amazing. It was probably the best WrestleMania that's been out there in many years. I am 42 years old. So when WrestleMania 1 came out, I was two years old. Um, and after this one finished, me and my girlfriend ended up watching WrestleMania 1 when Hogan and Mr. T fought against um, Roddy Piper and Paul Ondorf. But this one was just amazing. And I, I cannot stress enough, Triple H is doing an amazing job. We have tag teams. We never had tag teams back in the day. Vince never liked tag teams, and Triple H has been bringing the tag team division back. He's been bringing back so many divisions, so many things, so many stories that have been going out there. You know, there's a story right now with Drew McIntyre and obviously with, with, with CM Punk. We're, we're getting all this out, and it, it's brought me back to loving WWE than what it was before. Um, so I want to thank Triple H for everything you have done. If you guys have liked this tier list, I have it down below. You guys can do your own as well. Let me know um, when you've done it. If you guys want to put it on my Twitter, I'll post. I'll actually pin it on my tweet for the next two weeks. You guys can put yours right below mine. I would love to see what you guys have done. But this was freaking amazing. We're going to be playing WWE 2K24 on stream as well. We're going to be doing the Road to WrestleMania matches. And we're going to create myself because I used to be an independent wrestler. But to know more about that, you got to check out that stream and those videos. And obviously, check out the video that's going to be popping up right now. Thank you so much. Peace out wrestlers and good night